BBS, your information leader. This is CFQC Television News. Coming up, security is being stepped up at the Prime Minister's residence in the wake of this month's break-in. In sports, the CFL hands out the hardware, and in Saskatchewan Farm News, CN Rail shares a hot seller on the stock exchanges. And now the noon edition with Trish Lammers. Kevin Waugh has sports. And Myrna Stark, Saskatchewan Farm News. Good afternoon. One RCMP supervisor reassigned following the break-in by an armed intruder at 24 Sussex Drive has been suspended. The RCMP announced today the member is suspended indefinitely with pay pending the results of an internal investigation. At a morning news conference, the Mounties also announced that four junior officers who had been suspended earlier have an additional seven days to file written reasons as to why their pay should not be stopped. They could ultimately be fired. The RCMP has also beefed up security at 24 Sussex Drive. Specially trained members of the Prime Minister's protective detail have been assigned to guard the residents around the clock. Security is also being reassessed at embassies and the Governor General's residence. Reports say Ottawa is ready to announce new rules for selecting immigrants. Sources say emphasis will be placed on those who can speak English or French, have, an, have at least a high school education, and who have job skills that are in short supply in Canada. In addition, preference will be given to immigrants between 25 and 35 years of age. The Conservative majority in the Senate is taking aim at Canada's new gun control legislation. Some of the senators aren't happy with the bill and they're asking for amendments. The Senate Legal Affairs Committee reports to the Upper House on Monday. If the Senate votes to adopt the amendments, the bill will go back to the Commons. Justice Minister Alan Rock says he will not compromise. I don't believe, uh, I don't believe that's necessary. I think the bill as, as passed by the House is constitutional and in the public interest, and so we're going to be asking the senators to approve it as it is. Crews have finished draining the toxic chemicals from three derailed tanker cars in Humboldt. Mayor Doug Still says crews worked through the night, and the last of the toxic chemicals was removed from the tankers around 7 o'clock this morning. Two of the cars contained anhydrous ammonia. The other contained hydrogen peroxide. The derailment happened Wednesday night. Yesterday, school children were given the day off, and Humboldt residents were told to stay indoors and close their windows. Still says things are back to normal today, but people are being advised to stay away from the accident site. CN Rail officials say the rail line will be reopened later today. A CFB Moose Jaw technician has been ordered to stand trial on a charge of making child pornography. A trial date hasn't been set for Master Corporal Ronald Hemsworth, a 17-year veteran of the armed forces. The 38-year-old Hemsworth will also be tried on two weapons offenses and eight counts of sexual assault. Defense lawyer Jeff Ginden says Hemsworth wa waived his preliminary hearing to avoid forcing children to testify. Hemsworth is charged with sexually assaulting eight different girls between August of 1992 and June of 1995. The charges involve children as young as 18 months. The pornography charge stems from videotapes that allegedly depict young girls in the sex acts. Meanwhile, a 53-year-old Regina teacher will find out today if he will do any more jail time for buying sex from young girls. Robert John Lowe, a former teacher and wrestling coach, pleaded guilty last week to buying sex from girls as young as 12. The Crown wants Lowe sentenced to three to five years in prison, saying it will deter other men from paying underage prostitutes. But the defense says Lowe shouldn't do any more time than the six months he's already served. Saskatoon's EGATS Youth Center has launched a fundraising drive to keep its outreach van program going. Funding for the outreach program runs out at the end of the year. The van offers food, clothing and intervention to the city's hundreds of street kids. Organizers are asking the public to sponsor the outreach van by donating $10 per mile. We need funding to keep it alive. It has more than proved itself um, valuable to the young people on the street. They, uh, they use it all the time and it's, it's a program that reaches them where the need is greatest, right there on the street where they're trying to survive. 
The job of an RCMP officer is a challenging one, and it requires both mental and physical endurance. Yesterday, some RCMP members were put to the test, and as Leanne Niblock discovered, it wasn't an easy one. This is the PAIR test. PAIR stands for Physical Ability Requirement Evaluation, and it's a lot harder than it looks. I'm seriously tired already. It's not, not overly difficult, but it's not easy neither. It's, it's a demanding test, and uh, you're quite tired after, after the four minutes. <laughs> right now, the test is voluntary for active members, but soon every member will have to pass the pair and do it under a set time limit. And that standard uh, right now until the year 1998 is going to be four and a half minutes. And in the year 2000, it's going to be uh, uh, four minutes, and it's also going to be mandatory. Right now, it's on a voluntary basis for the members to come out and try it and learn, learn what it's about. Weber says the test does represent common physical demands of police work. Here's how. Well, the running aspect is, is something that policemen do in their, their duties. Uh, the hurdles is jumping small hurdles. Is, it's a part of jumping hedges or the, the barricade is a three-foot barricade that simulates having to go over a, a fence. And falling, getting up on your back and from your stomach it simulates falling down and getting back up. Uh, the stairs are obvious. There's stairs you have to climb in buildings or up and down hills, slopes. Then there's the push-pull machine. There's 80 pounds of weight on it. It simulates struggling or wrestling with someone. And it's no easy task. Push it out, and your arms lock, you just on here, and you just the same thing. Okay, well, maybe we'll skip this part. It's a fair test. It's uh, the same time uh, is allowed for anyone 25 years old to 50 years old. It's, they consider it to be the same job, uh, so it's the same test, whether male or female. But that's not the end. After the circuit is done, participants must carry 100 pounds for 50 feet. This simulates a rescue. The pair has been around since January of 1991, and so far most members agree it's a good way to ensure Canada has a fit and able force. Leanne Niblock, BBS News, Yorkton. Senior staff at the Scotiabank on Faithful and Circle have turned different shades of green today. The manager and others are painted up after branch staff took up the challenge to raise $1,000 for the United Way. After a month of soliciting customers, they reached their goal, which was matched by the bank. The green color is also to celebrate Grey Cup weekend. The big winner is Saskatoon United Way, which is now $2,000 closer to reaching this year's fundraising goal of $1.3 million. Well, the CFL handed out the, the hardware last night, and Kevin will have that and more sports when we return. Stay with us. Good afternoon, everyone. If last night was any indication at all, I think this is going to be the best Grey Cup in the history of the CFL. It was a fabulous show on Regina last night for the CFL Awards. Mike Pringle of Baltimore was named the league's most valuable player. With more, here's Bill O'Donovan. Dave Sapunjas enjoyed his best season in the CFL, leading the league in receiving yardage and catching more than 100 passes for the second time in his career. However, that wasn't enough to keep this season's rushing leader, Mike Pringle, from accepting the Outstanding Player Award. A runner-up to Doug Flutie last year, Pringle rushed for 1,791 yards and 13 touchdowns. I think that's always been one of one of my one of my uh, main uh, good points uh, to to my football ability is is the fact that I'm so durable and I I, I I like the fact that I I can take the pounding and keep on going especially for someone my size. However, there was no denying Sapunjas the outstanding Canadian Player Award. He beat out Edmonton linebacker and former Saskatoon Hilltop Larry Ruck. Sapunjas is a two-time winner of the award. Very proud about it. Uh, I've been very vocal about being uh, Canadian and, and the Canadian content in the CFL. And uh, to go up there and to win it with outstanding Canadians across the league is something I'm very proud about. For the second straight year and for the third time in four years, Edmonton linebacker Willie Pless is the outstanding defensive player in the CFL. Pless, who led the league in tackles, was picked ahead of Memphis defensive lineman Tim Cofield. Eskimos receiver Shalon Baker joins Pless in the winner's circle. He was named Rookie of the Year ahead of Baltimore return specialist Chris Wright. 
And for the second straight year, a stallion has won the Outstanding Offensive Lineman Award. Mike Withycomb gets the nod over BC Lions nominee, Jimmy Taras. Bill O'Donovan, BBS Sports, Regina. And we'll have more, of course, on the Grey Cup during our 6 o'clock cast as we'll have stories on Calgary and Baltimore as they take the field at Taylor Field this afternoon for the workout. The high school football finals at Taylor Field were played last night. The Holy Cross Crusaders from Saskatoon won the 4A title and the North Battleford Vikings won the 3A title. This is the 4A. Holy Cross opened the scoring in the second quarter. This is David Mirza here taking this dump pass. He's gone, 75 yards, 7 0 Holy Cross against Regina Usher. Usher quarterback Jason Clearmont puts it up. And Tyler West is there for Mount Royal, but instead his teammate Ed Elash gets the interception. Usher needing to stop Rob Jenkins. He hasn't been stopped all year. There's the touchdown for Cross, 13 to nothing. Unicorns get on the board on a fake handoff here and a give to Ryan DeRoe to make it 13 to seven. In the third quarter, Usher will take the lead for the first time. DeRoe with the major through the air. It's 14-13 for the Unicorns. But the Crusaders take over as David Mirza will run, run this one in for the touchdown. And uh, it's 20 to 14. Then later, Rob Jenkins with nearly 190 yards rushing. The score from 12 yards out, 27-14. Holy Cross celebrating with a provincial 4A title. Here's the 3A North Battleford and Prince Albert. TJ Zavlanos with a two-yard touchdown run. Prince Albert comes back, fourth and goal. They gamble Jason Babin to Jason Roy, 7-6 for North Battleford as the extra point was no good. Carlton will take the lead as Mike Denny will take it in to make it 13-7. North Battleford, though, would come back. Adam Bradley will air this one out, and he finds Bill Baker, 60 yards on the play, 14-13 for North Battleford. And the Vikings would get yet another major. Richard Hominy takes this one in for the touchdown. Vikings win 22-21. So congratulations to all four teams, and I guess in particular North Battleford and Holy Cross for winning. The Provincial 4A Girls and Boys Volleyball Championships will open today in Saskatoon. Games will get underway at 1 with the gold medal match set for tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Prince Albert teams are favored in both categories this weekend. The Blades will take on the Prince Albert Raiders in a home and home series this weekend. The first game is tonight at Saskatchewan Place at 7.30 with the return match tomorrow night at the Communiplex. Last night, just one game, Prince George broke a 15-game losing streak. They beat Tri-City 3-1. Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League play last night. Melfort defeated Notre Dame in the lone game 5-2. Tonight, four games, including Melville and Yorkton, for a rematch from an earlier game this week. What can you say about the great one, Wayne Gretzky? He collected six points last night as the L.A. Kings blasted the New York Islanders 9-2. Gretzky scored once and set up five others as the Kings forward moved into second place in the scoring race, only behind Mario Lemieux. Here's Gretzky finding Marty McSorley behind the defense. And look at Marty score that one for L.A. And Gretzky scores for the Kings. Coming up there, 9-2, six points for Gretzky. Good for him. Eric Lindros is back in the Flyers lineup and against Ottawa last night. He scored twice, including the opening goal as the Flyers won by a score a 5-3. Toronto beat Tampa 5-4 in overtime. Benoit Ho gets the winner here for the Maple Leafs. There it is, early in overtime. Florida and Vancouver, a 2-2 overtime tie. This will be Scott Mellaby scoring for the Panthers to tie the game at 2. New Jersey and Boston, 2-2 tie. Valerie Zalapukin with the tying goal there for the Devils. And Chicago beat the Rangers 3-1. Chelios to Ronick, wasn't that pretty? Hawks playing pretty good, and St. Louis beat San Jose 3-1. Al McGinnis scoring here for the Blues. Canada West, their volleyball season opens on campus tonight. Manitoba against the Huskies. And in basketball, Saskatchewan is, is at Victoria. The hockey team, they're at Rutherford Arena this weekend to take on the UBC Thunderbirds. That's sports. Your weather is next. Well, fog was reported across a good portion of Saskatchewan this morning. We should notice a gradual clearing from the west this afternoon, at least across the south. A ridge of high pressure is working its way eastward, and again, temperatures should move above the freezing mark. Let's take a look now at conditions across the prairies at noon. Edmonton 1, Calgary 8, to the east, Brandon minus 1, and Winnipeg minus 5. 
The forecast for today for Prince Albert and the north, mainly cloudy and zero. Regina, Moose Jaw and South Saskatchewan becoming mainly sunny at a high today of plus three. For Saskatoon and the Battlefords, much the same, becoming mainly sunny this afternoon and three degrees. And for Yorkton and the southeast, becoming mainly sunny this afternoon and one. A trough of low pressure will cross the province tomorrow, bringing cloud, and then the colder air will begin to push down. The forecast for tomorrow now, cloudy with occasional freezing rain in the morning for Prince Albert. A low tonight of minus 6, a high tomorrow of 2. For Regina, cloudy with afternoon sunny breaks. A low tonight of minus 6, a high tomorrow of plus 6. For Saskatoon, cloudy with sunny periods. A low tonight of minus 6, a high tomorrow of plus 4. And for Yorkton, mainly cloudy and windy. A low tonight of minus 6, a high tomorrow of plus 5. Then that cold front will pass through southern areas by Sunday. The forecast for Grey Cup Day for Prince Albert and the North, cloudy and windy with a chance of light snow, a high of minus 8. For remaining regions, including Regina, mainly cloudy and windy, highs ranging from minus 5 to minus 6 in the south. Current conditions now for Prince Albert, cloudy and minus 1, winds out of the southeast at 5. For Saskatoon, cloudy and minus 5, winds out of the east at 7. For Yorkton, cloudy and zero winds out of the west at 3. And for Regina, cloudy and minus 4 southeast winds at 18. Temperatures across the province, La Ronge, minus 5. The Battlefords also reporting minus 5. Minus 1 in Melford and Hudson Bay. Kindersley, minus 6. Winyard, minus 2. Plus 3 for Swift Current. Moose Jaw, minus 4. And Estevan, minus 3. That's a look at our weather forecast. Myrna Stark is next with Saskatchewan Farm News. News Saskatchewan. Brought to you by Saskatchewan Wheat Pool. Good afternoon. CN Rail shares hit stock exchanges today with a full head of steam. Shares in the newly privatized company jumped immediately to 1950 from the purchase price of 16 and a quarter. And just after just six minutes, 7.7 .7 million shares traded hands in Toronto and Montreal. But the shares didn't trade locally until about 10.30 this morning. The plane carrying the final signed prospectus had trouble landing in Regina because of fog. Saskatchewan Securities Commission needs that document before trading can begin. The government has set the final price of CN shares at $27. The Canadian Wheat Board has accepted 100% of wheat, durum and feed barley offered under Series A contracts. Some delivery calls on this series have already been issued, allowing farmers to deliver immediately. The board expects heavy grain movement through the end of May as farmers take advantage of premium prices. Economic Development Minister Duane Ligenfelter says the province's recent economic agreement with the Mexican state of Cohila offers real promise. Ligenfelter says companies in water management and those involved in value-added value products should make inroads. The minister says the opportunities are driven by the environment. Some of the uh, new pulse crops that we're growing, for example, peas and lentils and beans, are in huge demand in Cohila. Uh, for two reasons. One, they have suffered uh, even worse drought. They're a dry area to start with, but they've had even drier than normal circumstances. And secondly, much of their irrigation uh, is causing some uh, real problems with that lowering of the water table in a number of areas where the drawdown has been significant. And secondly, soil salinity that uh, is caused by irrigation. A directory of all farm management training courses and farm resource material available in Saskatchewan is now available. The free directory lists and describes programs, publications, videos and audio cassettes. Copies can be picked up at all rural service centres. And a survey suggests more than 100 million Americans will eat pork today. The National Pork Producer Council says this reflects pork is the most commonly eaten meat in America. The survey says 75% of Americans between 18 and 59 have pork on any given day. 57% beef and 49% chicken. And Saskatchewan's Food Processing Association is using this week's Grey Cup celebrations to promote food produced right here at home. Guests at the opening gala dinner in Saskatoon got a basket containing three Saskatchewan-made foods, including things like jam, jelly, honey, chocolate and salsa mix. Turning now to the uh, markets courtesy of Global Link, Canola's uh, January contract is down 60 cents at 422.20. The June contract is also down 80 cents at 428. Flax's December contract is down 3.30 at 3.37.50, and the March contract is down 3.30 as well. Wheat, the only month traded was May. It was up $1.70 at 250 cents. Western barley is also up 150 at 182.50. Uh, domestic barley was untraded, and oats, uh, March was the only month traded, up a dollar at 202. 
Turning to the cattle, uh, A1 steers 139 to 141, heifers 138 to 140. On Thursday, there were 5,625 cattle and calves on offer, D1 and D2 cows 34 to 42, D3 cows 25 to 35. The steer price is 80, uh, 50 to 84.75, that's over 800 pounds, 6 to 800 pounds, 77 to 85, and 4 to 600 pounds, 88 to 95.50. The heifer price is over 800 pounds, 78 to 87, 6 to 800, 73 to 80, and 4 to 600 pounds, 78 to 89, 25. Today's hog range you see in front of you. That's the afternoon farm news. Go Stamps, go. Thanks very much, Myrna and uh, Kevin. Uh, big night last night in the CFL and a lot of Saskatchewan people there. I mean, oh, no that have question. gone on. Yeah, you know, uh, broadcasters. Uh, they gave Don Whitman a nice award last night. He used to work here at CFQC, so it was great. Uh, it was nice to see Bill Baker there, and George Reed came back from Calgary, and Lancaster himself. Okay, great, and uh, thank you for watching. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. A CFQC Television News presentation.